Shabbat Shalom. I didn't make any videos last week. Um, didn't read last Shabbat or anything. I was out of town. Thinking there might be a video of where I went, what I was doing. Um, that's not going to be this video. But essentially, I was out of town. Um, it's quite busy. So unfortunately, I didn't make anything. Um, but hey, I'm, I'm here. I figured it's Shabbat and we should read. So um, last I remember, we read Genesis 19. And of course, that is the story of Lot leaving Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. And they're getting utterly destroyed. His wife looks back. Of course, she turns into a massive pillar of salt. You know, they're told not to look back. She does. Yada, yada. Um, then you got his two daughters in the cave. <sighs> Weird stuff there. Um, all right, so that's, that's pretty much caught up there. Um, so let's just read 20. Genesis 20, <clears throat> and Abraham set out from there to the land of the south, and sojourned between Kadesh and Shur, and stayed in Gerar. And Abraham said concerning Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, sovereign king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him see you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken for she is a man's wife so there's a little white lie here right and abraham's doing it essentially for both their sakes you know um hey i don't want them to kill me and then you're left without a husband whatever just for them to take you so i'll just say you're my sister right so, Yahuwah comes to him in a dream and says, hey man, that's not good. This woman you took, she's that man's wife, blah, 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 right? However, Abimelech had not come near her and said, Yahuwah, would you kill a righteous nation also? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she even herself said, he is my brother. So he's like, look. I, I didn't I didn't do nothing, right? I see what you're saying, but I didn't do anything. In my integrity of my heart and in the innocence of my hands, I have done this. And Elohim said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. And so I kept you from sinning against me. Hey, bro, I understand that's tracking. But I am giving you forewarning so you do not sin against me. For this reason... I did not let you touch her. And now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. Um, and there's, from my understanding, a very big misconception for a lot of people of what a prophet really is. And yes, you do have many prophets who have, in this word, essentially predicted things to come. And that is part of being a prophet. But it's not just that. It is simply speaking on behalf of the Father. Like when the Father tells you to speak words. And he gives you a message to send out. You know, you are a prophet. So, now of course, when you read the word, you have a clear understanding that you should be very careful of claiming to be a prophet, right? Because if you become a false prophet, well, the Torah for that is death. But essentially what I'm saying here is don't think of it in that context that he's just the prophet you kind of think of in your head. Because obviously, as we know, Abraham is not predicting the future, right? But he is living for Yahuwah and he certainly at times probably speaks on his behalf when he gives him, you know, his words. So anyways, just thought I'd throw that out there. Let him pray for you and you live. But if you 
Do not return her. Know that you shall certainly die, you and all that are yours. So you and all your nation, all your family, right? So Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and spoke all these words in their hearing. And the men were greatly frightened. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And what have I sinned against you that you have brought on me? And on my reign a great sin. Have you done you have done matters to me that should not be done? So he calls for Abraham and he's like, Hey man, what what have we done to you that you would lie to us, that you would cause us this stumbling block, right? Um what what is the problem here that we may clear it up, right? And Abimelech said to Abraham, what did you, what did you have in view that you have done this matter? Like, what, what do you have to gain, man? And Abraham said, only because I said to myself, the fear of Elohim is not in this place. So he has the perception that they are not living for Yah. And they shall kill me for the sake of my wife. And yet, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. The stepsister, right? And she became my wife. And it came to be when Elohim caused me to wander from my father's house, <clears throat> that I said to her, This is your loving commitment that you should do for me in every place wherever we go. Save me, he is my brother. So, kind of what I was saying before, he had the impression that they did not live for Yah. And that their intentions would to be, let's kill this guy, take his wife, right? And for the sake of that, and then her not being under his covering anymore, losing her husband, they come up with this great white lie, right? And so he's explaining this to the king. And Abimelech said, see, my land is before you dwell wherever is good in your eyes. So now they're essentially compromising. He says, look, man. We don't want any trouble. You know, he was already saying before, why are you doing this to me? That's not very kind of you. So take your wife back. My land is before you. Let me help you out, right? <clears throat> and Sarah said, er, and to Sarah, he said, see, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. See, it is you. It is to you a covering of eyes before all who are with you and before all others, when you are cleared before everyone. So they give them, I don't want to say a peace offering. I don't, I don't know if that's the term I'm trying to use there. But essentially, they're, they're giving them a little something, something, right? That it may be a covering of eyes. So it's like, hey, take this, wipe this slate clean. This never happened. We don't have to talk about it, right? Let it no longer be brought forth to our attention that we had this little mishap, right? Is at least kind of what I'm getting out of it. Um, and Abraham prayed to Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech and his wife and his female servants. So they bore children. So they were... What's the word? Um barren right at least in this context it seems like they were barren you remember before or yah came to him in a dream it was like hey i understand what's going on but i'm warning you let him pray for you he is my prophet um and now he prays for him and, and he asks for yah's healing in his wife and his female servants and all that and they now bore children um and so an interesting thing there not that i'm suggesting that's what's going on here but in my continuous reading of scripture it seems to be this concept that's brought up multiple times um especially when talking about pagan rituals and the things that the pagans were doing and all of it seems to be surrounded by this idea of fertility right and they have fertility goddesses and this thing and that thing and it's all about fertility right it's fertility worship and 
Yah hates it. Um, and so throughout the word, he kind of makes it abundantly clear. Hey, fertility is my thing. I gave y'all life and I gave y'all life abundantly. I gave you the opportunity to procreate, to bear children, to raise little ones up in the way that they should go, right? And so when you divert from that and start doing your own things, worshiping all these false deities, right? <clears throat> um, quite frankly, pisses them off, right? So a lot of times in scripture, when such things are going on, and again, I'm not suggesting that here, but at least here, right? They had this problem of being barren. And when they give it up to Yah, right? And they're like, and at least in this case, when Elohim prays on, or not Elohim, Abraham prays to Elohim on their behalf. I don't know if this is what he asked for, but maybe he asked for the restoration of their ability to bear children, right? So interesting thing right so fertility is Yah's thing and i've heard many of testimonies too of people that were having trouble right getting pregnant having children and you know they start following torah start getting on the path that the father set before them all these things now he blesses them with children so it's a really cool thing i just thought i'd bring that up um then again What's truly going on here is kind of gray, at least to me. It's not written in black and white, but we do know that he prayed for them on their behalf and they started bearing children. So, interesting. For Yahuwah had, oh, well, if I had just kept reading, I'm sorry. For Yahuwah had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So there you go. That's... That kind of <laughs> sums it up there, doesn't it? Um, I think I'm just going to end it there for today. I'm trying to I'm going to continue reading because it's been a conviction on my heart to do so, right? And I know people do watch this, so for y'all's entertainment, whatever it is, right? If it helps y'all to dig into the word, then, you know, I want to continue doing it. But I am trying to be better at letting the word be the word. Because um, I'm a man. I am not a pastor. I am not anything other than your brother, right? I'm your brother in faith, in belief in Yeshua, and... <clears throat> You know, I'm still learning as I go, right? But I do know that the Father told me, hey man, you really like talking with people. You really like reading my word. Do it with more people, right? And I think this is a great way of doing that. But I know I get talkative, so I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be careful moving forward with only trying to make it maybe a little better to understand because I know the first time I read through this this word it's there's certain things that you have to kind of read through a couple times until you finally get the understanding of what's truly going on so outside of that I'm not trying to try to stay away from rabbit holes and all that stuff and uh, I mean I'll bring stuff up that I've maybe researched before or whatever um, for your knowledge that you may, if you want to dive into that, but I don't want to do that here. I just simply want to read the word and have fun with it, right? It's Yah's word. It's awesome. And, you know, this gives me a little happiness, happiness and joy. It makes me feel like I'm reading with people, right? Though I'm the only one talking here. Um, but I'm talking to you guys. And it it's a really peaceful thing to know that. 
I get to read this word with other people because the word says we're two more gathered in my name. I am present, right? So it starts my day off right. So anyways, maybe that wasn't all that important, but yeah, I was out of town last weekend and just didn't really have the capacity to read or anything. So I went pretty dry on my video making, but that's okay. So anyways, I hope y'all have a peaceful, restful, awesome Sabbath. I hope y'all stay in the word. I hope that you just try and draw near to the Father today. And, you know, spend time with your families, with your loved ones. And just do the things, man. Um, with that being said, I love you guys. Shalom.